Boyd the Legend coming at you from the Norwegian Epic Cruise Ship. In this video, I'm going to show you all around the ship, the bars, the restaurants, the attractions, the shows, things to do, whatever you can think of on the ship, I'm going to try and show you it all. Starting here on the pool deck, and I really, really like the pool deck here in the Norwegian Epic. I mean, you got a giant pool here with lots of cool things. Like, I know somebody that likes to hop in the pool, but I like to sit on the side of the pool and drink, and there's plenty of places to do that. I like all the different water fountain kind of things, so the kind of futuristic sculpture type stuff. And they have, I think, like five or six hot tubs in this pool deck alone, so you've got a lot of hot tubs. I like the seats over there that you can sit like, yeah. in the pool, but... Yep, absolutely. Yeah, like those? Yeah. Those are, those are really cool. Now, um, of course, the, the star of the show here on the pool deck is the, the aqua park, the water slides. And uh, one of my favorite slides I've been on, I've been on uh, at Star 10th Cruise, and this is definitely one of my most favorite slides. They've got a bowl slide that's a tube slide. So it, that's really, really fun. You've also got this green slide here, which is uh, the longest slide. And then you've got a really kind of unique slide, this purple slide, which has got a cool design. I'll show you more on that one in just a second. So here's a closer view of that purple slide, and I just thought it's a really cool design because you sort of go over there, you go along the outside of the funnel, and then you go, I think, around a rock wall, and the purple one spits out right there. So all your slides, they all start in the same spot, but they all end in different places. Your bowl slide obviously dumps out right there. Your green slide is going to dump out on the other side, and the purple slide dumps out in the middle there. So we're still here up on the, uh, the outdoor deck, and uh, they have a really cool rock wall and a really, really hard rock wall. Like, um, there's no way I would ever be able to do that middle one there. And that's the medium one. That's the medium. Yeah, so they have three that they actually operate. The easy one, you go up that side. The medium one, this gentleman's struggling with here, and then the hardest one's on the end. But um, it's cool, and it, it makes it neat that it's not an easy rock wall, because now you get all these people watching, because it's kind of an attraction in itself, to see, like, hey, could this guy do it? Can he not do it? Is he going to fall in hilarious fashion? And things like that. Also, I was talking about that purple slide, and there it is. So it's cool. It goes around a rock wall, and then into this building where it finishes up. And uh, anyway, the rock wall is really, really neat. So this is something, again, that I haven't seen on another cruise ship. It's uh, Splash Golf. So they, they combine a mini golf experience with a, like, kid's splash area. So you have to putt and you go through different uh, water fountains and stuff like that. Uh, Molly actually won. Yeah. And for the kids, they have a, another little splash area here, complete with their own mini slide. So, uh, it, it's again, it's interesting. It's very different. But I, I like the Splash Golf. Splash Golf is really fun. So this hallway here gets you to the back of the ship where they have their Spice H2O, which is sort of an adults only area. Um, it's where they have their big funnel vision screen and they do a whole bunch of dance parties at night. But I really like this area, um, not dark, quite dark enough, but these like very Epcot-esque lights um, look really, really cool once it does get dark. And they have good, uh, nice comfy couches for you to lay down and kind of take a midday nap. Anyway, let's head over to Spice H2O. I'll show you guys what's going on over there. So we're now on the back of the ship on the Spice H2O area, and this is uh, adults only during the day, all ages at night, because they do like family movies or the big deck parties and stuff like that. But you got uh, a couple of cool hot tubs on the back of the ship. You got an, an adults only pool. You got a funnel vision, which right now with the glare is not working so great, but uh, depending on where the sun is, and it, it could be really, really cool. It looks great at night. They do uh, you know lots of lights and lasers and stuff. At night, they, this has actually been my favorite, outside of the Disney ships, which they have their crazy Pirates of the Caribbean with fireworks party. These have been my favorite deck parties that we've been to. They had a big glow party yesterday. We all got some sweet glow merch for free. And I really love their deck parties. Their setup for it's really cool. Um, a little bit of a problem with the bar. They only have like one bar in the section of the ship. They roll in a temporary bar for the deck parties, but uh, that one bar gets very, very overloaded. But uh, this, I like this area. It's uh, relaxing back here. Over here on the sports deck in the back of the ship, it's home to a full court basketball thing. I mean, this is a legit size giant basketball court. A lot of the times you'll see a basketball court, but it'll be a smaller, a half court, or not a full size court. This court is gigantic. And then you turn around, you got some cool stuff for kids to do up here. This is called uh, Spider Mountain, only open at certain times. And then you have to crawl up through these various uh, nets, get all the way to the top, and then take the big slide down. Unfortunately, adults, you can't go on it unless you're like under 110 pounds, then you could go on it. They also have, uh, by the guys over at Vertical Reality, one of these Euro bungee type jump things, which is, um, those are fun. Those are for, definitely fun for kids, and you're on the back of the ship, so if you, depending on which way you face, like you're facing the other way, the views you get will be absolutely amazing. Also, there are some questionable murals of weird things. But anyway, that's uh, up here at the sports deck. So now I'm coming at you from the waves 
pool bar, which is sort of the main pool bar for the pool deck here. And uh, it's busy at all times. Like, this is busy all day, every day. And one major complaint I have about this ship is pre-mixed drinks. They have pre-mixed drinks here on the ship, so if you want a Long Island, it's not made fresh. It comes out of one of these big jugs. Um, so if you don't order off the menu, that's, that's what I would tell you. Because you're going to get a jug drink, and it's just kind of gross. Um, I know a lot of, every, pretty much everyone on the ship's on the beverage plan, but uh, it's just, ew. Like, ugh. Anyway, um, vanilla vodka and coke for me, the thing. Not that drink. So the pool deck, there's these two random glass elevators that only go to two floors. <laughs> deck 15 up to deck 18. So we're going up. We didn't get a really cool view, too. As you go up, and then we're gonna get a take a look at the quiet zone. So high up, it's crazy. This ship has 18 floors. So here we are. We're up on deck 18, front of the ship, in the quiet zone, and it's probably the most peaceful spot on the ship, I think. And that's not something that's easy to find—a peaceful, tranquil spot on a ship with 4,000 people. But um, it's not the easiest thing to find. But when you find it, it's a nice place to hang out. Great place to take a nap. Mm -hmm. Especially if you get one of these loungers here and just hang out and watch the sea, that's, that's really cool. Especially for like, sail away? Sail away, or, or I mean, sunset time. So that's the, uh, the quiet zone. Just a cool overview shot here, looking down at the pool deck area from uh, the Deck 18 quiet zone. Also, it's crazy how high up you are. Alright, this is one big ship. So now we're up here in the Garden Cafe, which is the, uh, the buffet restaurant. And uh, I really like the buffet for breakfast. I wasn't too crazy about it for dinner. But sure you some of the stuff is an Asian-themed dinner buffet, right? You have Asian barbecue pork loin, sweet sour crispy pork, beef and broccoli. The beef and broccoli looks good. All right. Also, one of my favorite things on the buffet, they've got great breads. And I know that sounds weird, but um, these, this cheese bread is amazing. And then they got like pretzel bread. It's just, the whole thing's just terrific. Um, Asian stir-fry noodle station. Also, it's a very big buffet, so like, what you see over here will also be on the other side, and then what's over there might not be over here. So it's, it's like double-sided, which is good for a ship with so many people. And uh, I really haven't seen lines for the buffet at all. Got some Indian cuisine over here. Then you do have like your standard stuff for kids, so you have a, a burger and hot dog station for every meal. So you got burgers, dogs, chicken sandwiches, the fries. Fries are fantastic here. And then uh, pizza. But yeah, french fries are really tasty. And uh, that is the buffet. Loved it for breakfast time. Not, I didn't get a film for breakfast, but uh, buffet at breakfast time is really good. Eggs Benedict, omelet stations, omelet stations with no wines, uh, a bar where you get mimosas at. Yeah, yeah, big thumbs up. Also, the buffet is in the front of the ship. So it's really quiet now. They just opened for dinner, but uh, you get some really cool views from over here if you want to just hang out at the buffet for a while. Also, I want to show off one of my favorite details on the ship is in the buffet. They have these awesome giraffe lamps, and uh, that's <laughs> super fun. All right, so another really cool thing, they have a make-your-own soup station. Like, this is something, again, I've never seen on any cruise line. You know, pick your broth, pick your mix-ins, and you make your own soup. Like, how cool is that? More fun up here on the buffet. They have a, I guess it's like a panda bear made out of fruit. And then a penguin made out of fruit. Cool. Also, they got fruit if you like fruit. I like penguins, so I'm amused. Look at little feet. Look at little feet. They're oranges. So I think this is kind of interesting. Um, they've got strawberry kiwi enhanced water flavor. Never even heard of something like that. Now, directly below the buffet is La Casina, which is one of the many upcharge restaurants here on the Norwegian Epic, and uh, they have a lot of specialty dining restaurants. This one is an Italian-themed one in a very, very nice room. Um, this is not one of the ones we're eating in. We were, we were eating in three on our three-night cruise. This one isn't one of them, but uh, it looks pretty. So, a couple places around the ship, they have these things, which tells you what the availability is for you to make reservations for either your normal dining rooms or the specialty dining rooms. And as you can see, all the specialty stuff looks absolutely 100% booked up. Your two regular dining rooms are the Manhattan and the Taste. Epic Club is for sweet guests only. And then uh, all the other ones look like they're booked up. Uh, we have Cagney's tonight. We'll be there in about an hour and 25 minutes. But I think it's neat that they have these so that you could judge your way if you wanted to change your reservation or you wanted to see where you wanted to eat tonight. I think it's a good idea to have these around the ship. 
So if you like shopping, Norwegian Epic's really good for you. It's probably the best ship I've ever seen for shopping as they have almost an entire floor dedicated to shopping. It feels very mall-like as you walk through too. Like there's uh, islands in the middle and things like that. We're not big shoppers. We're gonna go buy some booze and that'll be about it. But a really nice ship. If you like shopping, this, this is for you. Now something super popular and super unique to this ship is the ice bar. And the ice bar, it's um, an upcharge, it's about 20 bucks, but you get two drinks and you get a cup made out of ice. There's ice sculptures in there, ice seats. And uh, it's a really, really neat experience. We're a little bit spoiled in Orlando going to the ice to get our palms, and this is not included with the beverage plan. So it's not something we're gonna do on the ship, but it's, it's really unique. And it, there's been a lot of happy people going in and coming out of it. So probably the most photographed thing on the ship is this crazy looking crystal LED chandelier, which hangs above. And it's one of the few places on the ship where you sort of feel the different levels. Um, I really kind of feel like the, the main thoroughfare of decks uh, seven, six, and five kind of feel more like a mall than it does a cruise ship. You don't really have the windows to see the ocean a lot. You have a lot of these multi-level structures like you would find in a modern mall. But uh, that's not a bad, necessarily a bad thing. It's just different. Um, down there on the bottom, you have one of the dining rooms. I believe that is the... Is that the taste for the Manhattan Molly? Mm -hmm. I, I think it's the taste one, which is the... Uh, the only difference between the two is the taste is less formal, so you could like go in shorts, where the Manhattan one is a little bit more upscale. And the it's, Manhattan one has music and dancing. Dancing. Okay. Well, this one has music, too. There's a piano right. down there. Um, we really can't comment too much about the main dining rooms because we have the specialty dining package, so we really have not eaten there. Uh, we ate there once for lunch, and it was pretty tasty. Probably going there for breakfast tomorrow. Oh, yeah, I might go there for breakfast tomorrow. Now, while we're up here, I want to talk to you a little bit about this. Over here, we've got sort of an Asian section. You'll have, on the right, is going to be the sake bar. But they don't have much sake. I think they have like one brand of sake. It's really disappointing. And as with a lot of the bars, pre-mixed drinks. Um, then over here you have a sushi bar. A lot of people love sushi. I don't. But if you do, I mean, that's the place to go. And then right over here is another one of their upcharge restaurants. And that is the Teppanyaki, which is sort of that, that Shogun or Kobe Steakhouse or is it Benny Hans or something like that? And uh, that kind of idea, which was good. We ate there last night. Very tasty. Um, one thing, because the cruise ship and fire is a big hazard, they can't do any of the cool fire tricks. If you're used to a hibachi restaurant, they can't do it here. So it's a little bit less show than normal. But the food was really tasty. Yeah. Um, again, if you have a specialty dining package, I recommend it. I don't think I would recommend it because it was like $30 a person. Like that seems like too high for me when you could go downstairs and have a really nice dinner at no cost. But uh, that's teppanyaki. You got a lot of food there. Oh, you got so much food. You got the soup. You got and you, you got filet mignon. Mm -hmm. Filet mignon, soup, edamame, a salad. Uh, we we want to go see the comedian, so we skipped out on dessert, but uh, you got a ton of food. All right, and there we go. That's this part. So in what might be the weirdest thing on board the ship, they have a barber shop, a straight up barber shop. Uh, I don't need to shave right now. Tomorrow before work, I'll, I'll shave up. But uh, they've got a barber shop on board, a fancy looking cool barber shop. So in deck 10 in the back of the ship, you have two different uh, specialty dining restaurants. Yeah, deck yep. 10. Deck six? Deck, deck six. six. We're on deck six. Deck six. Thank you, Molly. That's why I keep you around. Uh, we have uh, Moderno and we have Cagney's. Cagney's is their fine dining steakhouse. We just come out of our meal there. And then Moderno is a Brazilian steakhouse, a uh, Chura Chuscaria? Uh, I don't know how you pronounce it. But uh, we did um, we did Moderno, the Brazilian steakhouse on night one. We just got our dinner at Cagney's. And um, they were both fun. They were good. Um, Brazilian steakhouse was good. I had a, like, if you've never been to a Brazilian steakhouse before, it's a really, really fun time. And, uh, so the way it works is like guys come with giant mutes, meats on skewers and they, they have like, some of them have like full swords and they just cut it off at your table depending on what you want. And it was wonderful. I had a filet mignon wrapped in bacon. It was one of the best things I've had on the ship. And then Cagney Steakhouse. If you've been to a, a fine dining cheese steakhouse. Bread. Yeah. Brazilian cheese bread is uh, one of Molly's favorite dishes ever. And that's something they served at Madeira now. And then Cagney's is a, a fine dining steakhouse like, like you'd find on land. But I, it was so good. Um, I think the highlight of the meal for me was probably the appetizer of pork belly, which I think is, you know, one of the tastiest foods out there. But uh, it was it was so good, the you pork belly. Like, you need two hours or so. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a long format. Um, more so than anything else on the ship, the Cagney's was a long format dinner. 
where it was about a good two hour meal. Um, I had a tomahawk steak, guys. I'm gonna post a picture of this, but um, it was a 29 ounce tomahawk steak. I never thought I would eat a tomahawk steak in my life. So the fact that I got to do that, I was like, oh man, that was so cool. And I think it's probably your best value if you have the specialty dining plan, because like my steak for dinner was $39. I also had an appetizer, a soup, two sides, and a dessert. So for like Molly and I, our dinner would have been, not counting our alcohol, which I, we had a couple of glasses of wine, um, it was 92. Like, that's really pricey. Anyway, um, uh, Moderno's fun and, and good, but I think it's not as great as uh, like a Brazilian steak as you'd find on land. And the same with the teppanyaki. Where Cagney's, I think, is either at the level of a very good steakhouse or above it that you would find on land. Um, it was definitely my favorite meal on the ship. And uh, we've been on a lot of cruises now. It's our 40th day at sea. And the only restaurant I like a little bit better is Palo on the Disney Dream. But uh, Cagney's is good. I mean, it's, it was really, really good. Molly, any thoughts? Besides you're so full, you might explode. Eat there, it's good. I had my doubts. You did, like, this I did. is the one I was really hyped yeah. for. I wanted the Brazilian steakhouse so I could uh, taste different meats. meats. Yeah, and that, that is really fun, it's good. Between the two, I would go to Cagney's. Oh yeah, uh, Cagney's is um, one of the highlights of the cruise, I think, so far. Definitely. So another bar lounge here, this was the Cavern Club, based out of Liverpool, and this is a uh, home, it's like, I think it's a live music venue on the ship, and the cool thing about it is it's very Beatles themed and English themed, so this is where you will find the Epic Beatles. And I'm gonna be quiet, but it, cause there's people playing, but um, it's fun. It's also very intimate for a very large ship. All right guys, I'm gonna show you what the cabin looks like here in the Norwegian Epic. We are in 12017. Always bring some magnets, I love having magnets. Then if I get really drunk, I know which one's mine if I don't remember numbers, because it has magnets on it. Anyway, come on in. We got a balcony stateroom. First time uh, we've ever had a balcony stateroom. So that's kind of fun. Um, also, bring some sort of like dummy card to put in here to keep your lights on. <laughs> I use my in the loop business card, but uh, anything will work. You know, a, a driver's license, a credit card, anything. You don't. It doesn't need to be your ship card or anything like that. Anyway, here's the stateroom. Um, kind of a weird layout where it's like a a curvy wall, and where you have a. a rather uncomfortable couch, and then your semi-rounded bed. A um, couple things, the bed's kind of small. Like if you're, a, if you're a tall person, your legs are gonna hang off. And the way they set up, they put the pillows like this. Definitely only use one pillow. Like if you just use that first pillow there, your legs are gonna be way off the bed. Um, there is lots of storage, like the, I think these open up back here, right Molly? Yes. And yeah, so you can store stuff over there. And then uh, a lot of people don't like, when I was doing my review, my research on the ship, a lot of people really don't like the bathroom, because the bathroom setup is kind of weird. Um, your sink is just out here in the middle, and then um, you have your showers over here on the left. With a actually, really nice shower head, I will say that. And your various It's a big goos. shower too, it's not like a curtain like most uh, yeah. cruise ships. Yeah, I, I like that it's not a curtain, because that, that sort of sticks to you and is gross. Uh, you got a cup holder there for your shower beer. If you're on the beverage plan, you gotta have a shower beer. Um, so the shower's fine, I actually quite like the shower. But the thing is, like, you have to sort of draw a curtain. It's kind of an awkward cabin, unless you're, uh, like, dating the person you're, you're with. It, it could be kind of weird. Um, one thing I don't like is the, the toilet is also one of these frosted glass kind of, uh, things. So, unfortunately, you hear everything going on in the bathroom. Poops, pees. The toilet flushing, which is like the loudest thing in the world. Go, go push the button, Molly. It's like the, the this noise is awful. Like you're, there, there is no sleeping through that. Um, as far as the rest of the cabin, it's, it's fine. I, I like it. Um, they got a, a movie channel on the TV, which is always fun. Um, it's kind of different. Other cruise lines will have like two or three different movie channels, and they'll maybe play once every two or three hours. This one, it'll be uh, one movie channel. But they just they repeat over and over and over again all different movies. Like we've never seen the same movie twice. Um, Towel Animals, as with most cruise lines. We got the sweet elephant. We actually he was wearing my sunglasses yesterday. But uh, now I need to wear my sunglasses because we went to Private Island. I right, got a leftover bottle of Grouch, which is not a good beer. <laughs> I don't know why I had that. Um, 
Okay, one of the knocks, they don't have a lot of outlets here. I think two. they have like two, and they're in this cabinet here. They have two and then one razor. Yeah, so if you're coming on the cruise ship, uh, bring a power strip if you have one handy. That would definitely make your life easier. Um, and yeah, the cabinet space and things like that. Balcony, first time we've ever had a balcony. And I feel like our balcony is gigantic. Like, there's a lot of space out here in this balcony. Not much, two kind of just chair kind of things. But a lot of space. And it's nice having the balcony. It's kind of relaxing coming out here with some drinks and just sort of chilling out. But I, I don't think it's anything I really need to have. Some people need the balcony. Like, my dad's a claustrophobic. He could not, he, I don't know if he could ever go on a cruise. And if he does, he'd have to have a balcony. For me, I don't feel like I spend a lot of time in the stateroom where a balcony cabin makes a lot of sense for me unless it's, you know, a small upgrade in, in charges. Um, also, you can see the bridge from here. The bridge is right there, right to our left. Anyway, awesome, also beautiful, beautiful blue water here in the uh, the Bahamas where this great start K day for us here today, their private island. But anyway, that's the stateroom. Um, nice, if you got any questions about the stateroom, just let me know. Um, I like it, uh, it, it was fine, it works. It's uh, pretty big, kind of a weird layout. Um, Especially did, for families. Yeah, if, if your families and the curtain kind of thing, it'll be weird. If, like, uh, you're going on a cruise with your grandma or something like that, which are probably kind of weird anyway. It just makes it worse. Go in here. Grandma dumps. I like the, all the storage, though. There's a lot of storage. Yeah, and you can put stuff under the bed. That you, yeah, and that you don't see. Mm -hmm. Like, behind the couch and... All these cabinets. All those cabinets are mm -hmm. storage. All right, and that's the stateroom. Next stop, Shaker's Martini and Champagne Bar. And uh, this guy, I think this goes down as one of my big disappointments on the ship. It's, uh, again, their Norwegian problem with premix drinks. And it, I think it's, it's more acceptable at a pool bar, but you come down here to a martini bar, which you think would be the fanciest bar with the nicest drinks, and to see six premix canisters is just kind of insulting. And I love the martini bar on cruise ships, something like uh, Skyline on the Disney Dream, or the Alchemy Bar on the Carnival ships are fantastic, awesome places. And this, like, the drinks are okay, um, but they're, it's just kind of disappointing. The Spiegel Tent is something that's really, really interesting on the ship. It's home to their uh, Cirque Dreams at, uh, dinner show, which is sort of like a Cirque just like knockoff kind of thing. Uh, and it's it's neat, it, but it's very, very pricey. It's like, if you want good seats for dinner and a show, it's like 40 bucks. If you want cheaper seats, it's like $30. Um, so it's definitely a little bit pricey. If you get the, uh, the unlimited dinner plan, you can get it for, I think it's like 10 or 15 bucks. But uh, I didn't really like the menu, but I love Cirque, so I wanted to see it. Uh, we did get to go in there and see the venue. We went to do an escape room, which is something they did during their day at sea, which I thought was really cool. I think, I think more cruise ships do. They, they set up a, uh, an escape room with all sorts of games, and we were in there for 45 minutes playing them. Also, one thing I really like about the Spiegel Tent is they've got um, this great wall. Cause it's a two-story venue, but then you've got the great wall over here with all these fantastic uh, pictures of like old-timey circus acts. So uh, that's the Spiegel Tent with search dreams and dinner. Here's the art gallery on the ship, and uh, it's nice, it's very large, it's one of the larger art galleries I've seen. They've also sold a lot more art than I've seen on the ship, and um, I like it a lot. It's, it's neat, it's well done. Um, they had Disney art, and like Disney Thomas Kincaid stuff. I like how the elevators let you out in the uh, Exactly, and then if you want to see more art, you can go that way. It's uh, one of the larger art galleries, but uh, it's, it's one of the better ones. So now we're by Oshihan's, which is the 24-hour-a-day restaurant with like comfort food. And it's got a couple different things. One, it's got a bowling alley. There's a full bowling alley at sea on that side. Um, they had really, really good chicken wings. That was my favorite thing we had in here. The chicken wings were really good. And it's interesting because they're wrapped around both sides of the ship. And there's a bar on the other side. There's also a bunch of games on the other side. So they like, like pool and um, air hockey, ski ball like that. So that is Oshihan's. I'm going to turn this off because it's starting to get busy over here. So we're now on the other side of Oshihan's. You can see sort of some of the games in the background. Darts, billiards, ski ball, air hockey, NASCAR, Big Buck Hunter. All sorts of fun stuff in here. So we're now here in the Bliss Ultra Lounge. It sort of has two purposes on the ship. Early evening, it's kind of like karaoke bar on the ship. And later evening, it becomes, you know, your Ultra Lounge dance bar. Um, I actually really like this thing. I, I think there are a couple reasons. One, it's really big. 
Two, I think the decor is kind of cool. It's got like, like a lot of bicycle chains kind of, like strung to the ceiling. Um, couches are fantastically comfy. We've been hanging out, we watched some karaoke. We haven't been here for late night party night yet, which could be fun. I hope to hit that tonight. But um, it's very, very, very large. And there's plenty of places to put people. So I, I give lists of thumbs up. So here we are in the atrium on the Epic, and it's uh, kind of an interesting atrium. It's two levels with a jumbotron in the middle, and they do all sorts of game shows and stuff here. One bad thing about their atrium, there is not nearly enough seating for the people that want to play the activities. So if you want to go to any of the activities on the Epic, definitely get here early if you want to play some of the game shows and things like that. Um, they do have a bar that's one of the longest opening bars on the ship. Great drinks over there. Also, where you can get your, uh, if you like, you know, Starbucks style coffees, they have that as uh, well at the Asian Cafe. And um, that's the Atrium. Done with the Guitar Hero lettering, lets you know that this is the home of the video arcade. All cruise ships have one, and this one is no exception. And they have a bunch of games, pretty modern games. I'm a big arcade guy. Um, you've got a stacker game. This is also kind of interesting. It's um, this isn't a game at all, it's just a candy machine where you get to like mix and match candies. How cool is that? You get one type of candy, multiple candies. Anyway, you got air hockey over here, stacker, blackout, which is a really fun game. Uh, winners, few, a couple of cranes, traditional crane games. I don't think anybody's played these the entire ship. It's only when that draft, Molly, well, you should get win that draft. It's probably when that draft. Alrighty, over here, we got Guitar Hero, which makes sense with the facade. Deal or no deal, Pirate's Chest. You got uh, four racing games which are all connected, which is impressive because um, you don't have a lot of room at sea and to have four of one type of game is, is kind of neat. Terminator Salvation, H2O, we're driving a really fun game. Now, um, prices on the games, they're not, not the cheapest ever. Or if you want to pay H2O Overdrive, it's $1. If you want to ride the Typhoon by our buddies at Cryotech, it's 5 bucks. We got a motorcycle racing game, it's $1.50. Uh, Primeval Hunter. And it's interesting too, because a lot of times you see these in our arcade, there'd be a big giant sign up top. This, with the low ceiling, they don't have the big giant sign, because there's not enough room for them. Um, Transformers is a super fun game. Let's see, Big Mouth really fast, some wheels, we got Ski Ball in the back. And um, there we go, that's the arcade. Also, the ticket games, you just use this automated ticket machine. You don't actually go in a, <laughs> you don't actually go into a person. All right guys, that's the arcade. Over here is Entourage, and not my favorite HBO TV show of all time, but the teen section. We can't go in, it's fun fact, I am over that age. But I just wanted to show you guys that the, um, the stairs to get in are so cool. Like, warning, no access, no trust, nothing to use alone. We don't need your education. Entry at own risk. Like, it's, I think the stairs are really cool. So this is something I've never seen before. Deck 13, um, you're not allowed to film in that, but they have the bridge viewing room where you could go up there and watch, like, the officers doing their thing, and uh, you could get the view from the bridge. Just not something you do. It's kind of neat. Definitely check this out. Deck 13, in front of the ship. Yeah, so over here we're at the Epic Theater, which is the, the big main show theater on the ship. And uh, they have two big production shows. They have Burn the Floor and they have Priscilla Queen of the Desert. Uh, we saw one, we didn't see the other. We saw Priscilla and it was good. The problem was it was like an hour and a half long show. And like, okay, I have no problem with gay people. I have friends that are drag queens. So, like, this show wasn't, like, offensive to me. I was just bored. I fell asleep at some point. When you're drunk on a yeah. cruise, you don't want to sit there for an hour, hour and, and a half, half yeah. in a seat. That's a problem. Exactly. If it was a 45-minute show, it would have been excellent. Yeah, at an hour and a half, it was yeah. like a... Um, and because, like, that one was so long and kind of took up such a big part of our night, like, I just skipped this show. One, I don't really like ballroom dancing anyway. Um, so overall, the shows, I think, were kind of underwhelming on the ship. Um, and it was kind of sad, like, they used to have Blue Man Group, and Blue Man Group, I think, is, like, the coolest thing in the world. But uh, now they got this, that put me to sleep, and that we didn't see. Also, the theater is small. and yet It's really small for a 4,000 passenger ship, and you have to pre-book your, uh, your tickets ahead of time. So once you make your reservations online, you can go and book your tickets for the shows, and that's something I definitely recommend you guys do. 
So we're now in Headliners, which on some nights of the ship is home to Hell of the Moon, the dueling piano bar that rocks, like tonight. And we're getting ready for that. That starts in about 15 minutes. I'm really excited for that. We were here for a little bit on night one. It was super fun. And this also doubles as the comedy club on the ship. And we saw a uh, um, magic comedian ventriloquist yesterday. It was okay. It was kind of standard, uh, you know, cruise ship fare. But uh, Hell of the Moon, really fun. Uh, they do a really good job, and I'm excited to uh, go see these guys again in a little bit. The final specialty dining restaurant is Le Bistro, which is down here on Deck 5, and that is their French restaurant. And it's something that actually sounded really, really good. Like, I think if we had to piss, this would probably be the one that just missed out. This one or third. I wanted this one instead of Cagney. Yeah. But Probably, probably but, glad I went with Cagney. Yeah, but it looks really good. The menu's great, and uh, French food's tasting. And it looks nice. Like, the, the environment looks very nice there. Deck 6 is also holding Malton's Beer and Whiskey Bar. Um, definitely more whiskey than a beer bar, but it's uh, nice. I had a couple of nice cocktails here. A lot of them, I, I know I complain a lot about the premix drinks. This bar only has two premix drinks, so chest are most of what you're ordering is actually going to be made by a bartender, which is good too. Also, they've got these great couches, like... That sounds good, like sitting on that couch and chilling, having a good conversation, having a nice drink. That's that's pretty cool. They also have some musical entertainment that plays in the evening sometimes. And uh, you can see the guy sitting up down there. But anyway, that's Maltings. So there's a frequently asked question more for uh, like when you get back in port. And uh, I'm a used theme park guy, so I have to point some of this stuff out. Places to go, Universal Orlando Resort, where you could go visit Wet and Wild, I'm on this cruise in March of 2017. Also, I could go on action rides like Twister. The ride that replaced Twister is already open. It's, I mean, it's terrible, but it, it is already open. Like, come on. You're not even trying. Also, who books these rides? Rides like Twister, T2 3D, and Men in Black? Well, what the hell? Hogwarts. Yeah, it has the picture of Hogwarts, like, oh no, you don't want to see that. <laughs> They've got this twister thing. And that'll do it. That's all for our, our tour and review here on the Norwegian Epic. I had a lot of fun. I really liked the ship. Um, I had a great time. Uh, the price we paid for this cruise was a really good deal. We got a balcony cabin, taxes and fees, and, uh, you know, adult, the uh, unlimited booze plan, as well as the... Uh, Especially dining plan was like four hundred forty dollars for a three night cruise, which I thought was a really good price. So I think my value that I received for that was really good. Um, Molly, what were some of your favorite parts? Uh, favorite? It was the only other Norwegian ship we've been on is Pearl, and there was a lot of different activities. Um, more of a mega ship. Yeah. More or less. Um, but it really it doesn't feel like that big of a ship until you have to walk from like one end to the other. Like if you went to the wrong side where your cabin's, like our cabin's all the way in the front. If we take the wrong elevator up and we're on the, all the way in the back, then it feels like a really long ship. But like when you're on the promenade levels, it doesn't feel that big with all the distractions. Mm -hmm. um, I would say my least favorite part was, uh, I would say the bar experience was really not great. Um, none of the drinks were very good. I did love the dueling bar, though. Piano oh, bar. Oh, like, the entertainment... You've never seen that. The entertainment the in some of the bars was fantastic. You know, the Beatles were great. The deck party was one of the best deck parties ever. Uh, the Hell of the Moon dueling pianos was so much fun. But the drinks themselves mm -hmm. were really... Um, you could tell, that sort of, I guess, the cruise line knows that everyone's on this unlimited beverage plan, and they don't have to make really good drinks. Premix. It's premix drinks, and uh, none of the bar staff seems really friendly or helpful. They all seem miserable. And a lot of the wait stuff was like that, which is not good. And that's something I would normally say on a video like this. Um, some of them were great. Like, the, the guys in Cagney's were fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Uh, I like how there was a bridge room. Like, you don't see that. Yeah. Bridge viewing room. Um, another thing I don't think we really enjoyed was the, uh, the very Disney World-esque way that you had to book all of your stuff in advance. You had to book your stage shows. You had to book your comedy club. Book the escape room. Book your dinners. So wh while they advertise "quote unquote" freestyle cruising, it's it's really quite the opposite of that. It's very much structured cruising. And for us, we didn't see many uh, comedians because we booked our dinner beforehand, and you don't know the times of the shows until yeah. you're on board. So half the time, 
the entertainment that we would want to see is during dinner that we already pre-booked. Yeah. So that was kind of that was kind of annoying. And it's double-edged sword too. Like the other way is, you know, you don't pre-book things and then you have to show up really early. So it's 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 really kind of a lose-lose. Um, I, I love the entertainment as far as like the deck party, Hell at the Moon, stuff like that. The that deck was really party good. Was the best deck party besides Disney yeah, that sorry, yeah. there is. Um, buffet food was good for breakfast, mediocre for the other meals. Uh, especially the other was fun, but not it's something I would pay extra for. Um, okay. Well, I had fun at Teppanyaki. Cagney's was great, and I, I really enjoyed the Brazilian steakhouse. I don't know if I would pay extra for any of them when you get such a good experience in the main dining room. Because mm-hmm. like our Cagney's meal was great, but like if we were paying out of pocket for that, it would have been 130 bucks. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, that it was a great meal, but uh, 130 bucks is a lot of money. I like the. Um, the stateroom with the storage. I don't like the size of the bed because I'm five, 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 six, and I can mm-hmm. barely fit on the bed. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like how there's so many com- um, compartments and um, hidden areas. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like that our uh, the package we bought included the the unlimited beverage plan. So while there weren't any great drinks, I like to drink. So I probably had like 50 drinks in three days. Like an absurd amount of alcohol. And when you have cruise lines like Carnival that, that cap you off at 15 drinks a day, this cruise line does not, and you can drink yourself stupid. I love the pool deck, too. One of the yeah, best, the pool, like, pool, the pool deck is really, really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, overall, I had a great time. Uh, Molly, what, um, good, bad, mediocre, great? No, I would recommend it, definitely. Um, some of the shows, like um, some of the entertainment was lacking in the throughout the day. Yes. Like, like the, the bar entertainment were great. It, it's put their nightlife the kind night, of thing. Mm-hmm, but the day entertainment, you know, you have to show up 25 minutes early to get a seat in the atrium. Yeah, and there was like one thing going on at a time for a ship that's, you know, 4,000 people big, mm-hmm. where there should be like two or three different entertainment options running. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll agree with you there. Anyway, um, that'll do it for the Norwegian Epic, guys. Thanks for watching the video. Um, hope this helped you out. Enjoy your cruise. I know a lot of you watching are probably uh, heading off on this ship soon, and it was a really fun time. We have a couple of nitpicks things, but uh, a lot of that's hopefully to help you guys, too. They got their, if you're going on this cruise you know, next week or next month, now you know, like, book your stuff in advance. Uh, book- you can book in the stateroom or when you first get on the ship. I would just say, or- yeah. Because they have an app, but the app doesn't really work that well. Well, the app you can book, you just don't know what you booked. Yeah. You can't um, look it up. I would say right after you get on board the ship, definitely if you're not craving that drink or the food, definitely go and make like your tender reservations and your show reservations. And Unless like you're that. already allowed in your seat room, I would go to that. Yeah, I can see that on, too. On the seat room. Um, anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, subscribe to uh, cruise ship videos and all sorts of other videos. Uh, we have to get packing. we got to get back to uh, good old Orlando tomorrow morning. Fill our customs form and all that kind of thing. Uh, thank you very much. See you guys.